everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you another laminating project and that's how to make these little cute little pockets. So you can have these as posh envelopes. Um, you can make them any size you want. Once you see how I put it together, it's really straightforward. But they just open with these little snaps, which I'll show you. And then inside you've got your little pocket there. Now these, I'm making one more in this size today and these are going to hang where all my dies are because I've got quite a few loose, um, just random ones from like free from magazines and stuff, which are handy um, and they're good um, if I'm ever crafting with other people, um, then there's spares there for, for people to use, but they're quite good to keep in these little pockets. And um, with my labeler, I will label on the outside so that if I change them, I can just peel the label off. Because I did think about putting it inside and I thought if I ever changed the envelope for, the, for its purpose, it's still gonna have that in there. So I'm gonna label on the outside of these, but I just thought they're really, really cute. Um, you could keep one in your purse just to keep receipts in and things like that as well. So just a nice little project. And I've done bigger ones. And these ones here are to put any bigger dies in. And I've got that one there. And I've just basically been using up the last of my Nature's Grace papers. Um, so you can see there, these are nice big deep pockets. Um, which will fit the larger dies and things in and they sit perfectly with all the rest of my in my die storage because I've got one of those thin um, little baskets so everything fits in there so yeah once you know how to do this you can do any size you want so there's lots and lots here also I wanted to show you the snaps and the pliers now I had this um, probably the summer last year and I've used snaps before but I use them in my um, more of my sewing projects and my dressmaking and things like that. Um, that's a, another thing I love to do, which I don't share. It's just my thing and I've done it a long, long time. Don't do it as often as I want now, but um, maybe I might share something one day, but it's, um, it's another little passion of mine, which I enjoy. But these are great. So these are the pliers and these are the snaps. So I'm gonna show you how to use those. Very, very easy. And it's quite a nice way to incorporate it, incorporate it into your paper making. So, you are going to need to make the smaller ones that I've got here. Is So it's a deconstructed pocket and then the laminating pouch is what brings it all together. So you need, um, so I've got on the backs of mine, I've got all plain colours. So you can see there, so I'm doing another yellow so that I go in between just because I wanted to and it, it, it's the same colours that match in these papers. So my main pocket size is... Uh, what was it four by five and a half okay so you need two pieces that measure four by five and a half that's to make this size like I said you can choose once you know what you're doing then this is your little closure this is the flap so this is one and a half by again five and a half okay so it's the same width um, but just one and a half um, length sorry but just one and a half width then you need your laminating pouch which I've got here so you can, I think, if I, when I've done it, you can fit two of these on one sheet. Maybe that was another project I was doing. Let me just check. No, I, no, you can't. It must have been another thing I was doing. Oh, no, I think it is this. Sorry, let me just do it. So basically, you're going to sandwich these two together. They should sit perfectly, and you shouldn't be able to see anything from the underside. So I can't see any of the yellow poking through there. Pop it right down. Now, this side here is where I've got this bit so I've kept um, some of the acetate um, on the what's that the left hand side so that you can create these little tabs you may not want these if you just want them singular um, but basically you want to pop it in and to the left because this is now let me pop this in here so again it will make sense this then goes um, d right side down so you want your pattern facing down because this is going to obviously fold over and you want about a I'd say about a quarter of an inch gap in between because that's where it's going to fold so we're creating this this gap here this piece okay like so now to the left if I bring this around that way this is that left hand side and it's about an inch okay you want to leave it one inch there and then you'll be able to cut this hole punch there and that will give you that little kind of hanging piece if you don't want that, then butt this right up to there. But I do believe you can fit it again, another set of this in here, okay? Um, right, so that's that all done. Then if you, again, if you're gonna customize these in any way, you wanna do that beforehand. So if you're gonna have someone's name or anything you want, do that now. 
I've got my laminator all nice and ready to go, nice and hot. So I'm going to feed that in. I would usually cut this down and save that, but I'm not. And this plastic is good to use once it's set. It, it's like an acetate sheet, so you can use it for like your pop-up cards and things like that. So again, if you have lots of laminating pouches, but you don't have any acetate, you use this because it works really well. So that's what they will do. That piece I'll cut off and it'll go into my acetate drawer. Okay. As it comes out, make sure you hold it straight as possible and it will just help with the overall finish because as this is coming out, it's cooling straight away. Okay, so I've just taken that through and just while it's still warm, just lie it down there. And then you can cut this end off if you have left it like I have. Don't go really close. I've left about half an inch there. But like I said now, that is a nice piece of acetate. It's really strong, so it's great for other projects. Okay, so back to this now. It's, it works exactly the same way. We've now got to kind of open up that pocket that we created. So I've got my, um, my knife, and if you've watched the other two laminating projects I've done, what you want to do is in between here, there will be a very thin line where it's not stuck because it's had to lift up to go over those two layers of card. That is where we're going to cut. So you want to keep your knife as, as flat kind of to the, the mat as possible. And you're just going to pick the side, the very corner there, just ever so slightly until you can get the knife in between. And basically it will end up sliding along just like you're cutting some paper with very, very sharp scissors. So now I've got that in there. It just slides right the way along. Like so. And we're going to run this back through again our machine just to kind of reseal it. So now that has opened up that pocket for me. And that's now going to be perfect for anything. So this is the left hand side. We want to keep that if you want to have that little hook kind of thing. So this side here now you want to cut about um, a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch is my kind of border. I would say. Now I rounded off my corners here as well, I forgot to say that, because you can cut this on your punches. So I will show you in a second. I'm going to go right across that one. Then on this side here, I'm going to cut down, but just to the top of this piece here, this corner of the main area. Then you want to cut in from the outside and then leave half an inch and cut in again, giving yourself that again, that border, that quarter of an inch and carry on cutting down again. So now that's given us this little tab, which I can now grab my hole punch and I can't remember how far in I went, I probably just have to check, change it again, but you can just see, you can just see the hole there, I've punched through it. Okay, so then we need to round off the edges. Might need to cut it a few times, but it does go through. And mine is probably blunt because I've had it quite a while. I'm just gonna trim that bit there. There we go. Okay, so we've got this. Now we need to add our snaps. Now the only, I'd say, negative with using the snaps in your paper crafting is you are restricted to the depth of how far you can go in with it, which is why it's great for fabric because you can stuff fabric in here so you can go quite far in. Um, but you've only got that, that width there, which is about an inch. So it works great for these pockets and the ones I've shown you. But basically that is going to go in and that is where you can then punch your snap into place and then again we're going to go inside here and punch there but you see what I mean you can't go any deeper than what that gives you there so bear that in mind don't go you know piercing a hole all the way down here because you wouldn't be it wouldn't work so with that in mind these ones here I um I think I'd um <clears throat> yeah three quarters of an inch um yeah three quarters of an inch so I am Turning it over and I'm just going to grab a pencil, just something just to leave a little impression. So three quarters from, let me just check, yeah, so it's three quarters from the actual paper. Don't do it from your border for, of the plastic there. You want to come in and then find your centre, which is 
where am I? Five and three quarters, so two and a half. And then where am I? One, two, three, so I'm there. So there is my center point. You get this extremely sharp pokey tool that comes with the kit as well as replacements um, and a little screwdriver. And I'll share the links. Just pierce through that hole, okay? So you can see I've got that right through the middle. And then again, we wanna come down from that same hole that we've just done. And then we're gonna come down. So I've got three quarters of an inch there. So again, I'm just gonna put a pencil mark. You won't see this pencil mark, you're gonna completely cover it. And again, watch your fingers, because this is very, very sharp. And just, again, just poke another hole through there. Okay, so now I've got my bits. You can't see it, but I've got the hole there, and I've got the other hole just there. You can just see the yellow coming through. So now grab your snaps. So you get all different sets. I've always used just plain white in the past, so I've got loads of white already in my stash. Um, but this one here is really good. And basically, you will have... All these different colors obviously in this case here so i want to use i think it was another yellow because so i've got two purple yeah 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 so this one here so what you need for every snap is you will get these ones here which have your little um pin so it looks like a um you know a pin you'd use in your on your pin board so you want two of those one for the front one for the back then you will need what they call a male and a female is the easiest way to describe and this is the piece that actually goes in. So this one that is in my hand is the female. So you can see it's got like a little well that goes inside and this is the male and you can see it's sticking up. <laughs> so basically that will end up going in there and that's what creates your snap. So that's what will close it. And then one of the pins will go in this one and one of the pins will go in that one to keep them in place. Now it doesn't matter where you put the male or the female. So you might have the female so basically that's going to go through here, my pin, Ooh. so that's my nice matching one for the front. So it doesn't matter now whether I put the male or the female on top, it, they will work either way, okay? So don't worry about that. So I'm just going to grab the male, pop it on the top. Now you can push it down quite far, but basically what this is doing is inside here is a piece of metal. Now that metal is going to squash the pin of that head there that we've just put in and by squashing it it's gonna it's gonna squeeze that whole thing into place so what you do is with the black dish on the bottom there that will sit perfectly over the head okay so that is now I can feel that is in place and then just squeeze it down and it is so easy to do um, so if you have problems with your wrists and your this should still be okay because it's the, the clever design in the spring. It's doing all the work with very little pressure. So now I've pushed that down and can you see that the pin is completely squashed? That is now stuck, that's not going nowhere. You could never get that off and you'd have to cut it off and you'd obviously wreck the project. So again then with the, with the other pin, this is gonna go underneath and I can find the hole like so, okay. And then you pop that one on top. Again, you can push it quite far down. Now this one needs to go in there. So again, just move it around and you can feel when it sits into that kind of little dish. Okay, and then again, just squeeze it. And all it is doing is squashing that pin. So now you can fold it over. And actually, before we do that, we need to burnish. Um, just grab my bone folder. So what you wanna do is fold it and kind of lift it up a bit. You wanna fold in between the plastic. So I'm just gonna bring that along before I snap it into place, like so. And then I can just burnish that, like so. And then, there we go, pops into place. You got a lovely little envelope. So again, really easy to make. You could have, without that bit on, you could just cut that off and just have them all, um, grab this one here. You know, you could have them all kind of in like a little um, plastic tray or something, all labelled and you can flick through them. Um, so again, if you're looking for ways to store your dyes, this could be a nice, nice colourful alternative. But mine's going to just hang near them with other ones. So I've got these little um, rings here, binder rings. I'm just going to pop that one on that side. And they're going to hang, like I said, off the basket in front of my dies. And they will all be labelled. So that is that. 
Um, if I give you the size of these ones, if you want to make bigger ones, so it's exactly the same process. Sandwich the two together. Obviously, pop that one on top, put it through your laminator, and then pop them in. But remember, you can only go down. The max you can really go down is an inch. I went in three quarters of an inch, but um, I, I managed to get this in. But I, you do have to kind of I had to like bend the um, acetate up around here. So. I would say if you get this, play around with just some scrap first because you get so many in there and this is inexpensive. This whole thing costs less than £20. I think it was about 15 13 15 13 to 15 maybe 16 It wasn't for, for what you get and for, I mean, like I said, these are just going to last you. They're a handy thing to have. So quickly, this measurement here is um, the width is five and three quarters and then length you've got... Um, well, it's saying eight and one eighth there, but eight would be fine. And then this little flap here is two by the same width, which is five and three quarters. Okay, so there you have it. Just another useful little project for your craft room. Um, there are so many uses. Like I said, they will fit nicely in one of my baskets just stacked behind each other. They're going to be hanging, but again, would fit inside a little basket as well. But... I've used up all my Nature's Grace papers now and I'm really pleased with these. So there you go. Another fun laminating tutorial from me today. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.